It's a foreign language. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't know what the language is. Tell me about it. Abila, 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 is what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Continue. Abila, abila. Yes. And as you, uh, is as you hear that foreign language, I'm going to count from one to three, and you find where it is that that language is coming from. One. Hear the language. Two. And three. Where are you? What is this place? Even if you think you're making it up. It looks like a marketplace. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, Is the one that's saying all of this? Is it you? Or is it coming from someone else? It's just a marketplace. I just mm -hmm. hear it. And as you hear these words, you'll understand what it what they're saying. What is the what is it that they're they're saying out loud? Are they selling something? Yes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just, I just, I can see a village, mm -hmm. the market. Yes. Yes. So take a moment and just look at yourself, look down at your feet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I see. I, I, I'm, I'm tan. You're tan, yes. With the sandals. Mm-hmm. Do you feel male or female? I can't, I can't really tell. Mm -hmm. I think I'm male. Mm-hmm. What else are you wearing? Look at your legs. Just uh, brown sandals, mm -hmm. very, you know, very minor sandals. Mm -hmm. Modern sandals? M minor, like they're not, minor. there's nothing to the sandals. Okay. They're like old, like biblical days. Mm -hmm. So how is it that you're dressed? This uh, linen cloth, not mm. not anything fancy. Mm -hmm. When you touch it with your fingers, is it a rough fabric or smooth? It's not smooth. Mm -hmm. And how long is this thing that you're wearing? Like a... Oh, it's not very long, just down to my knees. Mm -hmm. yes. Like a skirt-like and, a, and a, another piece of material Wrapped around like a belt, mm -hmm. a sash, and yes. then another uh, short sleeve garment. I'm a male. Mm -hmm. And and notice your face. Do you have any facial hair on your face, or is it smooth? I see two different faces. One, I can see myself older and younger. Mm -hmm. Younger, I have a smooth face, dark hair. Older, as I get older, I have a, a beard. All right. So which one are you right now? How old are you now? I, I go in between the two of them. I'm not settled. Okay. So I'm going to count to three. When I get to number three, 
you will go to a moment in that same lifetime in which something significant is happening, something that affects your life. One, two, and three. What's happening? Where are you? Mm hmm. Yes. I don't. I don't. I don't pick anything. I don't, I'm not seeing anything. Mm hmm. So go back to that market. Find yourself back in that market, listening. What is it that you do at that market? Even if you think you're making it up, it's the first thing. I'm not really doing anything there. I'm just visiting. You're visiting. Very good. What happens as you're visiting this place? I'm just... I'm just sitting there looking. Mm -hmm. I'm not... I'm just looking, observing. All right. So I'd like for you to focus in on how you're feeling about this place, your emotions, the sensations. Just stuck. You're stuck. Mm hmm Yes. Tell me about that stuck feeling. Notice your, your physical reactions when you feel stuck. Yes. I'm not... I'm just there. Mm-hmm. And you say you're visiting. This is not your home? I don't, I don't believe so. Okay. So let's do something. I'm going to count backwards. And when I get to number one, you will be in the place that you call home before you went to that market. Three, two, and one. Tell me about your home. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Notice where you are. Are you indoors or outdoors? I'm indoors in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. I have a wife and a, two children. Mm -hmm. It's just a normal day. A normal day. Very good. What happens next? It's just a, she, she's cooking under the, in the hearth, mm -hmm. and the kids are just in the, they're not really doing anything, they're not playing, they're just kind of there. Okay. Take a moment and look into their eyes, the eyes of the wind of the soul. Do you recognize those eyes? Mm -hmm. Have you seen them before? Do they seem familiar to you? I don't think so. Okay, very good. So go ahead and advance to the next moment when something does happen where you make a decision. What happens next? Yes, the more you talk, the more I'll be able to. I think a soldier is coming into the uh, into the house. Okay. At first I thought the soldier was me, but it's not. I have a 
my wife there, but a soldier has come into the kitchen. Yes. So feel the energy of the soldier. What do you sense? He's, he's just, he's looking for someone. Uh-huh. Or, anyway, it's, it's a, I don't really like him being there. Uh-huh. So what do you do next? It looks like a, like a Roman soldier. Uh-huh. Yes. And are the Roman soldiers permitted to enter anyone's home? He made his way into the home without asking. Yes. And what happens next? What do you do next? I think I'm just trying to protect my family. Uh -huh. I really want him to just leave. Yes. What kind of business is he there on today? How does it affect you? I feel like you violated my home. Uh -huh. Like I, I didn't have a, I didn't, I don't have any authority. I just have to let him do his thing. Uh -huh. In this moment, I'm just protecting my family. Uh -huh. I just want him to look for whatever it is he wants and then just to leave. Okay. So what happens next? Yes. I don't know. He just, I just want him to go. Mm -hmm. Advance forward a little bit more to see what he does. The more you talk, the more I'll be able mm -hmm. to assist you. I just, I see a kitchen, I see the two kids, I see the wife and the soldiers coming in. He's agitated, he's looking for somebody. Yes. And I can't help him. Mm -hmm. He's just going to have, he'll have to just go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So what happens? I don't see him leaving my house. He's still there. Mm -hmm. I don't ever see him leave. What happens to you? I don't, I don't, I'm st stuck in the kitchen again. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck again. Yes. Yes. And notice while you're stuck in this home, are you able to freely walk around? No. I'm, st I'm just stuck in the kitchen again. Mm-hmm. Yes. And while you're stuck in the kitchen, do you have a body there? Notice. He's gra he grabs my throat. Okay. Very good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He grabs my throat and pushes me up against the wall. Okay. Tell me more. I won't tell him. I won't tell him. He's looking for somebody and I won't say. Mm -hmm. You know where they are. I must know. Mm -hmm. What happens after he... I think he kills me. Mm -hmm. Either he's either gonna bang me up really good, or he, um, he's he's gonna do some physical damage to me. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna tell. So, where is your soul when all of this is happening? I'm um, to the side. Okay. When he grab when he grabs my throat, I'm I'm looking at it. Okay, very good. So I want you to think about this. What has been the most difficult moment of all of this? 
I'm pretty sure he takes the blade and he stabs it into my abdomen. Uh-huh. So up until this moment, what's been the most difficult part of all this, all of this? Mm-hmm. The most difficult point is just that he, I don't have any control over him. He just overpowered me. Very good. How yeah. is this now affecting you in the life as Sharon? What does it make you do? Say. This, mm -hmm. Yeah. It Chest works. tightens up. I can't breathe. Somebody's choking me around my neck. Mm -hmm. And when this happens, what does it prevent you from doing? Speaking. Mm -hmm. Speaking my truth. Very good. So listen carefully. I'm going to count backwards from three to one. When I get to number one, you will go back to the same scenario before this happened before this Roman soldiers came in. But this time you're going to experience it in detail and feel everything. Three, two, and one. How does this all begin? Where are you? Yes. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing myself in the marketplace again. All right. Very good. Continue. What happens in the marketplace that you witness? Oh, it sounds bizarre. They're looking for John the Baptist. Mm hmm Very good. Keep going. Then they want me to tell where he is. Mm-hmm. How do you know John the Baptist? He's my friend. Uh -huh. Yes. Tell me more about that. They want they they want him. Uh -huh. and I, I just, I'm not going to tell where he is. I feel that that loyalty that you have for him. Mm -hmm. And as you're feeling that. We're going to go back even further to see the sh friendship that you have with him. And then we'll continue. <laughs> Three, going back. Two, and one. Tell me about this friendship. We're best buddies. Mm -hmm. We just have a good time and laugh and cut up. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yes, and what does he call you? I know, I know. Yes, continue. Jishoda or something like that. Jisha. 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 Uh huh. Is that your name, Jisha? That's what I hear. Okay, very good. Tell me more about your friendship. Just friends. Just, we're just good friends. Good. So I want you to feel what it feels like to be in his presence. To be friends with him. Mm -hmm. I just see so much laughter. Mm -hmm. And feast. And cups. We raise our cups. Mm -hmm. we're, it's like we're just having a great time. Yes. And does he spend time with you alone, or does he come visit your family, too? Yeah, he comes to see our family. Mm -hmm. He loves to come to our home. And my wife will go. Yes. Tell me about what you're experiencing now. I could, He comes to our home, and she will cook a meal, and we'll be sitting there at the table to have a meal. Yes. And, um, yeah, the soldier comes in. I just, I don't want them to take him. 
Is he there when the soldier comes in? Yeah. Uh -huh. What happens next? I take him. And I, I believe they kill me. Yes, continue. Tell me more. That's it. You know, they leave. And, I mean, they. At that time, I don't know them in my body anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'd like for you to look at your body, the one that's left there. Yeah. What do you see? I'm in the floor. Mm -hmm. Look at your throat. Look at your neck. Yeah. What does it look like? Well, it's not cut. It's, you know, it's just, I'm just there. I'm just in a fetal position in the floor. Mm -hmm. And notice how that body died. Yeah. So take a moment now, and I'm going to count backwards from three to one, and you're going to go right before that soldier kills your body. But this time you're going to experience it. Three, two, and one. What happens? What's happening? He just really bangs me up and puts a sword through my gut. Mm-hmm. And as you feel, you feel that sword in your gut, <clears throat> I want you to feel how the rest of the body is experiencing it. What's happening to your heart? I feel for my friend because I wasn't able to protect him. Mm -hmm. And at that moment when you're feeling for your friend, notice if you make any vows or promises. What do you say in that moment? Notice what the last thoughts that your brain has. I just let it go. Mm -hmm. I don't remember saying anything. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to go ahead and take that body into the light. And as you take that body into the light, I want you to look back at that death, at that feeling of responsibility. He doesn't blame me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't blame He knows that I tried. Notice what you're feeling about yourself. I failed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Notice what you failed to do. I failed to protect him. Mm -hmm. And notice how that feels in your gut when you fail to protect someone. Mm. When you feel that you failed. What does that feel like? It's painful. Mm -hmm. So take a moment now, and I'd like for you to suture up that space in which that sword came in. You can use your hands. And go ahead and suture that space. Until it's whole once again. And tell me when you're done. I'm done. And now I'd like for you to speak to those Roman soldiers. I want you to tell them exactly how you feel about what they did to you, to your family, and to your friend. I don't appreciate you coming to my home at all. Mm. I don't appreciate it. Yes, and by doing that, you took my life, you took my energy. Mm. Yeah, you took, you took my friend. Mm -hmm. You invaded my home without my permission. Yes. You stole my friend. My stole stole my friend. Yes. 
stole my lifetime with my family. And I demand that you give that back to I me. I demand that you give that back to me. Take it back. Open your arms and receive that energy. Just take back all of that. And as you take back that energy, you could feel it filling your space. That's it. Very good. And now that you've taken that back, I want you to notice what you have taken from them, from these Roman soldiers that violated your home, your life. What have you taken on from them? Notice what you're holding. Aggressiveness sometimes. Mm -hmm. And where do you keep that aggressiveness? Down my lower back. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what does that aggressiveness look like to you? Looks like what? I keep it inside. I don't really let it out that much. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't see it, but when they do, it's not good. Yes. So notice how this poison from these guards have poisoned your soul. Mm -hmm. That knife that went through you and the tip went to your lower back. Mm -hmm. Notice what it put there, what seeds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we ready to take out those seeds now? Mm -hmm. They don't belong to you. Mm -hmm. So go deep inside of your back now. You can go through your gut. If you wish, you go through the back. And I'd like for you to go ahead and pull out that aggressiveness and notice what it looks like. That's pretty ugly. Mm -hmm. And as you begin to pull out that aggressiveness, you'll realize where that ugliness came from. You realize what these guards, these soldiers had to do. The anger that they felt of being away from their home and their family and having to do things that perhaps they didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. And feel that anger as it goes right back to them and their souls. And you could see that you were just there for them to vent that anger at their own leaders, at their own government, at having to be away from their own family and friends. And you can now do something with that anger. You could send forgiveness through it. What do you say to them now? using that line of anger, what do you send to them? I send you peace. Mm hmm And what color is that peace? Amber. Beautiful. I'm going to sound the tuning fork and you send that amber right through that ugliness into the hearts of those soldiers. And notice what happens. Yes. Wow, I feel a pressure in the front part of my lobe of my head. Mm -hmm. I guess that's where they must have hit me in the head. Mm -hmm. Yes. Make it brighter. Now it's in the right side of my neck. Mm -hmm. Yes. Notice how all that anger was poison. Send them that love, send them that forgiveness, knowing where the root of all that anger came from. It wasn't about you. 
is about them having to do something that they may have been against too. Yes, I'm whole. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now that that amber is shining on them, notice what has happened to those soldiers. They're at peace. Mm -hmm. Yes. So take a moment now, now that you have been able to heal these soldiers with your forgiveness and light, mm -hmm. I'd like for you to find your friend John. Oh. And talk to him. What do you say to him? Hey, buddy. It's good to see you. Mm -hmm. What does he say? He's just glad to see me. Mm -hmm. So explain to him what happened so that he understands. I'm so sorry. I tried my best. Mm -hmm. he, he knows. He doesn't blame me. Very good. Very good. So you can explain to him now that when you had a body that this happened to you, that you were choked, that you were stabbed, that you were beaten. And look at you now, shining with this mm -hmm. amber light. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as you now leave, John, you can go and visit your guides. And as you find yourself in that space, with your guides. What do they say about your lifetime? We were waiting on you. You did, you did fine. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what is it that you needed to learn in that lifetime? What was it all about? was learning to balance. Mm -hmm. What were you balancing? Hmm. Not really sure. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to ask your guides to assist you in helping a different personality that is now living with these experiences. Why is it that Sharon now experiences that same choking sensation when she's around people with a different type of energy? Where is that coming from? Alertness. Alertness, yes. So is that a trigger that this soul implemented whenever there's someone that may put her in danger? This raises the flag. Okay. But it seems to be very uncomfortable. It's mm -hmm. a choking sensation. Yes. Is this what she needs to experience? It's not intended that way. Okay. So when did this become stronger? What made it change? Her path is going to change. Okay. Tell me about that. She has a mission. Mm -hmm. And things are shifting. Okay. Does she know what her, sh her path is, her mission? Not yet. Mm-hmm. Can you give her a, a little clue today? No. Okay. How will that affect her physically? What's happening and with her body? In time, she'll be able to tolerate the, her, the frequencies. Mm -hmm. And where are these frequencies coming from? Mm 
Are they from other people? Oh, the frequency, the frequency she has to, um, there's, they're coming through the portal. Okay. Which portal is it that they're coming through? The backyard. The backyard. Okay. So let's take a moment now and go to that backyard portal. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, you will be able to see that portal with your spiritual eyes. One, two, and three. What's there? It's a wormhole. Mm -hmm. Does it have a color or a shape? It's just there. Okay. And this wormhole, does it allow frequencies in and out? What's the function of it? Hmm. Yes. As you observe it, what's it doing? It's almost like a vacuum. A vacuum. Mm -hmm. A vacuum going out or coming in? Coming in. Coming in. Tell me more about that. What's coming in? I don't know what that is. It's a it's a some type of life form energy. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. So the more you describe it, the more you'll see how it is that it functions. Just talk about it. Mm. Watch it as it's in progress. It's almost like if you turn on a hair dryer and the hair dryer is blowing out hot air. Mm -hmm. It's like the portal is open and then all of this is coming in. Yes. What's coming in? I don't, can't see it. Mm -hmm. So I want you to just turn off your vision and begin to use all of the senses of your body like an antenna as if you were picking up all of the information. Like life forms are coming in. Life forms, yes. And these life forms, how are they taken on by the earth? Are they accepted? Yeah, yeah. The li little energies, mm -hmm. little life forms. Yeah, it's almost. In a different dimension. Okay. And how is it that these life forms are affecting you in the lives of Sharon? Do you interact with them? Uh, they're just ignoring me. They have their own thing to do. Mm -hmm. Where do you imagine these life forms have come from? Your city. Your city? Yeah, some type of city. A city. Mm hmm. Is it a city on Earth or elsewhere? No, it's somewhere else. Okay. So just take a moment and connect with them with your mind and ask them to show you that city. What does it look like? It's not any. It's not here. Mm -hmm. What is the city made of? It's like a.
cosmos. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a galaxy. A galaxy. That's what it is. They're from another galaxy. And why have they come here? Connect with them. Hmm. It's the new earth. Mm -hmm. They're preparing us for the new earth. How were they preparing us for the new earth? It's here, but it's not here. Mm -hmm. Ask them though what that means. The Earth guy is changing, mm -hmm. and so they're here for the process of the changing Earth changing. Okay. Are they responsible for changing? the actual structure of the earth, the people, what do they do to prepare? Not saying. Okay. So feel them out, this frequency that they're bringing. What does that feel like? They're just, um, it's just changing the atmosphere. Okay. It's just, it's, it's basically, it's just trans, the earth is just transforming. God is changing. Okay. And they're here to do that. Yeah. Mm hmm Good. So let's talk about this energy that is affecting Sharon. Are there any other portals? Not that it's causing her issues. Okay. Now there are some things in her home which seems to be bringing life forms also, and these are paintings. Let's shift into that. What is it about these paintings? They're bringing a, a frequency of vibration that she needs. Okay. Is it just for her? It's, it's just raising the frequency in her in the area where she is. Okay, very good. And why is it that she has brought these into her home? Why now? She doesn't have to have them. It brings her comfort. Okay. Is there any wisdom that comes from these paintings? Or just the frequency? There is, but it's not for her to know right now. Okay, very good. Very good. So we want to go deeper into what happens on her property where she feels that there are extraterrestrials there. I'm going to count backwards from three to one. And when I get to number one, you'll be in a state in which you're able to see them and feel them. Three, two, and one. Where are you when you're in this state? Yeah, I'm on my front porch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see them. They're very tall. Yes. Light beings. Very, very tall. Yes. Where do they come from? Ask them. Where, where, do, you, where do you come from? Archimedes? Archimedes. And why have they come to you? you here? Oh, they have a 
little comedy that said, build it and they will come. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you built for them? <laughs> It's, it's in triangular shape. Mm -hmm. What is it that's in triangular shape? What you built? They've built it. Okay. Take a moment and tell me what it is that they built. What is this? A landing platform. Okay. Is it something that you can see in a 3D world? No. 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 How big is this platform? Uh, about 300 foot in width. Mm -hmm. 300 by 600 feet. Okay. And where is it located? It's in the front yard. Okay. And how how often do these these uh, beings land there? Oh, we come quite often. Mm -hmm. For what purpose? We're monitoring. We keep watch on everything. Mm -hmm. When you mean everything, is it everything in her family or just on Earth? We're just watching everything. Okay. Mm. And what is it that they do with this information as they watch? It's, it, we collect data. Okay. Is there a particular data that you collect? Well, looking at the, how the water interacts with the soil. Mm -hmm. So are you some sort of scientists? Scientists, and we're getting ready. We're getting ready. What are you getting ready for? Is something happening? I'm, I don't think we're... We're not going to tell. We're not going to say. Okay. Is it something that has to do with that portal in the back? With all of these energies coming in? No, it's separate. That's separate. So you're preparing for something also? Yes. With the earth? We'll be, t we'll be taking people. Okay. Off planet. Okay. Do these people know that they'll be taken off planet? Some do. Okay. It seems that in order to take people off planet, you would have to have some sort of ships. Am I assuming that? Or will they be taken off without their bodies? The ships are underground. The ships are underground. Okay. So the ships are already here. Yes. Okay. Are these physical ships? I can see the ship under the earth. Okay. I can see they're in dark shadow. Okay. I don't know if it's a f solid mm -hmm. ship. Or if it's energetic, but I see the ship under the soil. Okay. So what is it that that Sharon needs to know? She 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 doesn't need to know now. She doesn't. How far ahead are we talking about when people will be taken off planet? Is it soon? 
It depends. Okay. Will all of the people be taken at the same time? Or little by little? Phases. In phases. So I have a question about people being taken off planet. In the past when people were taken off planet, they were taken to do slave labor. They were taken to places by those who would imprison them. Are we talking about the same thing here? No, this is just a transport. Okay, very good. So where is it that they're being transported to? Is this a different place, a different planet? I can I can see the humans getting on the ship, mm -hmm. and the ship leaves. Okay. Follow the ship. Where does it go? Ironically, it just orbits the Earth. Okay. What's happening on the Earth? It's like it, just like it, it orbits while something happens to the earth. Mm -hmm. Notice what's happening to the earth. What do you notice? It's, it's changing. Mm -hmm. The earth changes. Tell me more. And the, everyone's safe. Okay. I mean, I, I don't see anybody destroyed or okay. dying. They just get on the ship and they circle around the earth. Mm -hmm. Do you notice when the people are on the ship, if they're aware that they're on the ship? Yeah, they're pretty happy. Okay. They're just walking around. They, they're okay. So they're conscious of this. Yeah. Okay. They're not being. This is not being done while they're unconscious or no. in a dream state. It's no. actually it's physical. No. Very good. Very good. Is there anything else that needs to be known about? She goes to that ship sometimes. Mm -hmm. So let's let's delve into that. Mm -hmm. Go to a moment in time in which she's on the ship. Okay. Tell me about that. What does this ship look like inside? Similar to what's on the inside is on the outside. It's just, um, it's, it, it's bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside. Okay. And I want you to focus on the walls of this ship. Is it something that's solid or is it an organic type of a ship? It's kind of both. Okay. It's so, very organized inside. How many are in there? 10,000. 10,000. So it's a large ship. Yes. Mm -hmm. And these that are in there, are they light beings or do they have physical bodies? Well, there's a mix on board. Mm -hmm. What do they look like? And they, they're humanoid. Mm -hmm. What do they look like? Uh, just, I mean, they're they're not all the same. Mm -hmm. Just as if you, you know, went to a random location and and ask everybody to get on the board, then that's what you get. I mean, mm -hmm. they're no one's um, identical. Okay. And do they wear any particular clothing on the ship? The ones that work there. Um, yeah, some of the, you know, they do have uniforms on. Mm -hmm. What do they look like? Um, 
They have larger heads. Larger heads. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, in a uniform, in a uniform, that's close to their body. Mm -hmm. Is it a, is it a um, metallic or is it? Yes, it's slightly metallic. What color is it? It has three different colors. Mm -hmm. Which colors are they? Like a silver, reddish color. Mm -hmm. mm. And then a kind of a slightly larger head in appendages. Okay. They have appendages. Okay. And when you visit this ship, do you wear a uniform? Yes, I do. What does your uniform look like? Um, similar. I don't have a large head. Mm -hmm. But it's that reddish, silver reddish. Silver gray. Silver, yeah, grayish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grayish color. So if you're on the ship with this uniform, are you part of this crew? Yes. What, do, what is your responsibility on the ship? Logistics. Okay. So when you're on this ship, is your physical body in your home? Yes. Okay. So what would you call that physical body that is at home? Sharon. Okay. And what do you call yourself when you're on the ship? Larissa. Okay. So Larissa, as part of logistics, are you responsible for this mission of saving these people on Earth? Yes. Okay. Do you have more information? as to what's going to happen. Not at this time. Not at this time. So if Sharon were to want to get more information, would you be able to provide that for her? Yes. Okay, very good. Larissa, where is it that your ship is in that humans can't see it? We, c we can transport... We can move, we can be under the ground, and then we can be in the air as well. Okay. And why is it that people cannot see your ship? We're just, we have a cloaking mechanism. Okay. Are there any other ships that are around besides yours? Yes. Okay. So this mission to pick up and save people, <laughs> is this just your ship or does it... We have several fleets. Okay. Several in the fleet? Yes. Mm-hmm. And where are they situated? In different areas. Okay. And is there one in particular person or a being or a council that is responsible for the entire logistics of all of the ships? Who are you being directed by? I'll be long, I'll be... I'll, I'll be... I'll be long, I don't... I can't pronounce the name. Mm -hmm. What is this thing that you cannot pronounce? The... The lead. The lead. Mm-hmm. And this lead, where are where where is this? Is it a person? No. Mm -hmm. Is it an intelligence? Um, it's a being. It's a but being. It's not on planet. Okay. They have, are in a separate ship. Okay. So this being is responsible for all of the logistics of all of the ships? The lead. The lead. Very good. And you being logistics, do you have communication with this being? Oh, yes. Okay. Very good. Is there anything else that Sharon needs to know today about this? What's going to happen to the earth and what she needs to do about it? She has the key.
Tell me about that key. She was so, she was told that she needed to bring a frequency key to me. Do you know anything about that? It's a it's a it's a key that turns on the ships. Okay. So why is it that she has the key? She's the one. Okay. And why did she need to bring that key to me? You need the key. Okay. You need a key. It's a copy of the key. Okay. Are there others that have these keys? I feel she'll be giving them the key. Okay. Very good. Now this frequency key, was it given to her at one time or did she come with it? It was given to her. Okay. What happened when she received that key? She just, she holds it. Mm -hmm. It's one of, it's, she knows how, she maintains it. Okay. And where does she keep this key? stays in her chest. Okay. Now she's been told by many that are healers that there is something in her heart chakra. Is that the key? Or is that something else? Scan her chest and see what that's like. What does she have there? What does it look like? Is there some sort of an entry point there or an exit point? really tell it's definitely something mm -hmm. and does she keep that key in that space it's hidden it's hidden okay Larissa is there anything else that you can assist me with She's going to be turning on some ships. Okay. So she, she, she'll need the key. Okay. She'll have the key, but she's giving you a copy of the key. Okay. Does she have the master key? She does have the master key. Okay. And how is it that she gives me the key? It's a, it's a frequency. Okay. Is there anything that I need to do once I receive that frequency? You're going to take it back to your ship. Okay. To my ship? Yeah. Okay. So once I have that frequency key back on my ship, am I going to be turning on other ships? Is that it? It's, it's a key and you'll be sharing it, yes. Okay, very good. Very good. Thank you, Larissa. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So I'd like for you to go ahead and disconnect and focus on your heart and as you focus on your heart I want you to just begin to zoom in on that energy center in your heart and as you zoom in closer and closer what is it that you experience what's there I think my heart chakra is fine. Mm -hmm. So notice what happens as an energy goes near that chakra. 
It's a line of protection. Mm -hmm. Yes. So expand now beyond that heart chakra and notice what it is around your energy field that is attracting other souls. What do you notice? Looks warm and cozy. Mm -hmm. Yes. It just, it's like, oh, that looks like a warm and cozy place to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what happens when a soul sees that warm and cozy place? They just want to attach. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do you sense any or, that are attached now? No. No. Very good. So let's do something with that warm and cozy place. It's kind of like a place where you'd like to stay when it's really cold outside and inside is a nice hot chocolate and a warm fire. We'd like to do something in order to allow the, the lost souls to feel that warmth and coziness, but be a place where their loved ones, where God, where all the angels can connect with them and take them home. I want you to just create an opening that just goes out from anybody that comes into that cozy place. What do you envision this like? This door, this portal? A circular like a port on the ship. Very good. Very good. And where are you going to place that? Mm. My right shoulder. Very good. So go ahead and place that port. And you could put a sign on that port, door, or window, whatever you want to call it. And you can give directions for these lost souls. That once they've felt your warmth, that there's a lot more on the other side. That there is the warmth and love of God waiting for them. How would you like to address that? That invitation? I'd like to put a lie in there. Mm. A lion from Lyra is a, a sounding mechanism. Very good. So go ahead and do that. Place that there. And I'd like to now invite any lost souls that are in this area to test it out so that they could feel that warmth and go home. How would you like to do that? That'd be great. Very good. So I'd like for you to go ahead and spot anybody who's been wanting to go but is afraid. What do you notice? It could be someone from the land. Oh, there's a lady here. Mm-hmm. Yes. She needs to go. Very good. So mm -hmm. I'd like for you to go ahead and use that warmth. Mm -hmm. It could even be that amber light that you used with the soldiers. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and invite her to that beautiful portal. And notice what happens. What does the lion do once, once they come to you? This is you. You may enter and go back to source to be healed. Mm-hmm. What happens next? Ar Archangel Michael, assist her please to go back. Mm-hmm. Okay, she's gone. Very good. So she was a test to see how the portal worked. Yeah. Notice if there's anything that you need to tweak. 
that may not have gone as smoothly. Something that you can need put there so that you don't need to intervene. No, the Liren has it. He's Very good. He's going to assist. Very good. So scan once again your aura and see how that feels. Mm -hmm. That's great. Very good. So now with that, I'd like for you to focus on your physical body. And notice the swelling. And notice what's causing the swelling in the body. What's there? There's something in the hips. Mm -hmm. The hips aren't aligned. Mm -hmm. Go deeper into those hips and notice what is keeping them from being aligned. Yes. It's something from a past life. Okay, very good. So let's go deep into it. I'm going to count from three to one. As I get to number one, you'll be in that lifetime. Three, two, and one. Where are you? It's a childbirth. Mm -hmm. Yes, what's happening? Just complications. Mm -hmm. Yes. Continue. Just having problems with the, with the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yes. What happens next? That baby's stuck. Mm -hmm. What happens next? I think, oh, mm -hmm. the baby's okay, but I really had a lot of trauma with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's okay. I had to balance out karma. Oh. So I want you to notice if there was a decision that was made that is causing this pain. Is there a decision that was made either from you or from anyone else about the pain, about the childbirth? You don't have to know what decision there is, just yes or no. Was there a decision made? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. If you did know. Almost like muscle testing. Was there a decision, yes or no? Mm-hmm. The baby was fine. The baby's just crying. Yes. Notice yourself. What happened to your hips? Just out of out of alignment. It was just really hard. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I want you to notice as you go through that life being misaligned. Is this something that needs to affect the lifetime now of Sharon? No. No. So I'd like for you to go ahead and repeat these words. I used to have that body. I used to have that body. But I don't anymore. But I don't anymore. I let it go. I let it go. I am truly aligned. I am truly aligned. So be it. So be it. I want you to go into those bones and begin to align them. And 
I'm going to sound tuning fork and we could use a color to assist you with the lining them. What Pur color? Purple. Beautiful. Here we go. Begin to align those hips. This is not the same body. It's almost as if you were going into this body anew. Perfectly balanced. No longer carrying the weight of that pregnancy, of that difficulty. Releasing it, letting go. And tell me what's happening. I'm much better. Mm -hmm. How can you make it even better? I can release my tailbone. Very my tailbone good. has um, still has tension in it. Very good. So go ahead and release it. Just breathe it out. Relax it. Focusing only on the body of Sharon, not on the one that gave birth. And notice the difference. And as those bones now are adjusted, you begin to feel the flow of energy that was being held up by that, like a dam. You could release that flow. And notice what happens. What has changed? I can feel my um, bottom of my feet. Mm -hmm. Feel the circulation go all the way to my feet. Very good. Mm -hmm. Just begin to use your breath and send your intention to release all of that. Make a new decision to be fully aligned, fully balanced. outside your body, inside your body, feeling the energy flow. And as you begin to use the bathroom, you begin to release all of that pressure that had been held on from a body that didn't belong to you, from a past life. So scan this body again and tell me how it feels. Yeah, this feels really good. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. So now that that body is feeling good, just allow your soul to take you wherever it is that you need to heal anything else or provide you with information. As I count from one to five, it's almost as if you're beginning to take steps, steps up into a different place, a different time. One, stepping up higher. Two, that place of knowledge and information. Three, four, and five. What's there? Where are you? I have that snake again. Mm -hmm. I saw a vision of him the other day and he was all curled up asleep. Mm -hmm. Now he just woke up. Okay. So connect with the snake, mind to mind. What does that snake want to tell you? is wisdom mm -hmm. yes as you're going up and up he was asleep and then he uncorled mm -hmm. now he it goes all down my spine mm -hmm. and his head is right above my pine needle gland yes 
And what is this wisdom that this snake is projecting onto you? These are the gifts from the ancient times. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have. I need to bring them. I need to remember them. Mm -hmm. It's time to remember. Yes. What is it that you need to remember? In ancient times, I came here in a ship. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now I'm assisting again. Mm -hmm. When you came this to this place in a ship, was it Larissa? I was part of the Anunnaki. Mm -hmm. And why have you returned now? I have the skill set. Mm -hmm. Yes. How is Sharon going to use the skill set? Well, maintain the human race. Mm -hmm. Yes. And is that why she has surrounded herself with a family that has these skills also? Yes, we're here on a mission. Mm -hmm. All of you? Yes. Okay. Now this wisdom that comes from the snake, will it be shared with the other family members or friends? Or will it be just for her? She'll have the wisdom and she can share what she needs to mm -hmm. at the time it needs to be shared. Okay, very good. So, how will we take on this, this wisdom from the snake? How will this entity use it and store it so that she can once again access it? She'll receive, she'll receive a tool mm -hmm. and she'll know how to use it. Okay. Is that what the snake is giving her now? Yes. Okay. So just describe to me what it is that the snake is doing and what type of tool. A staff similar to Moses. Mm -hmm. Yes. A staff. Very good. Is this staff symbolic of something in particular? It, it will actually have a gem on the staff. Mm -hmm. And the crystal has, has energy. Okay. Will this staff come to her? Yes. Okay. So she doesn't need to go looking for it. It'll come. No. Very good. What else does a snake need to give you? It's similar to a tuning fork. Mm -hmm. It's a frequency. Okay. It's other. It's another key with frequency. Mm -hmm. Are you meant to activate that key now? She is ready if you would like to do so. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to sound a tuning fork, which is the highest one that I have, to activate that one.
Thank you. Mm-hmm. When she sees the number 22, she will remember. Very good. Very good. Is there anything that need, we need to work on today, or do you feel that we are complete? There's something that... There's something. Mm-hmm. There's something that's going left to right across the forehead. Mm -hmm. But it's just a memory Mm -hmm. of when she used to wear the headdress of the snake. Okay. What does she need to know about that? It's just a memory. Very good. To remind her. Very good. Is there anything else? So we do are we complete? That is all, thank you. Very good. So five can... wide awake, completely alert. Oh, wow. Feeling wonderful all over his tissue. Oh thank you. Welcome back. Oh thank you. Wow. That was different. <laughs> It was. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <coughs> Never. No. <laughs> wow. Something, huh? That was pretty detailed about Yeah. The ships, huh? Really was. And I've seen that too. Mm-hmm. I just didn't put all of it together. So you are logistics on a ship. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of fun stuff. <laughs> I'm the commander of another one. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So we, we're all on these little... <laughs> yeah. sh- and this is like our avatar here. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah and was. for some reason, we need to coordinate with each other and be prepared for whatever's happening. What did you notice mm-hmm. was, was happening to the Earth while you were on the ship during these Earth changes? Oh, yeah. It's big time. It's big time. But people are not on the Earth. No. Mm-mm. No, because they're on the ship. Looking, I, I could see the ship. I could see the Earth. What was happening? So shifting, or you know, just yeah, me, me, you know, it's a live being. So I mean, she was doing her thing. Yeah, just doing her thing. Yeah. Did you see us coming back, or not? I mean, you, we were just rotating. I mean, like you know, orbiting. Yeah. And um, I didn't see us la- land, but I do know that, I mean, she she does her thing, and then I, I feel that we came back. Mm-hmm. It's like she transforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she transforms, and we're just kind of giving her time to do her thing. And it seems yeah. like these little beings, that little life forms that come through your portal mm-hmm. are... You know, kind of like workmen coming in there and, mm-hmm. and preparing the earth for this. It's, yeah, it's, they're a little. Uh, they're, so in that vacuum, they're like these little. They're like, they're light beings, right? And so they don't look like anything we have right. on earth. Yeah. So it's hard to describe because they, as close as I can get to it is uh, like little. They're not little snails, but they're like little. Are they orbs? No, they're not exactly little orbs. No. Like little. They have, they have their. I, I can draw you a picture. Okay. So I, I do know what they look like, and it's, uh, it's really interesting. They just have their own unique thing. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. They're just unique. So are we going to share this? I don't think there's anything that, uh, would be private. Do you? No. Nothing private. No. No. Good. 